Prince Olaf of Norway, accompanied by Senior Controller Waitley of the ATS and Major General the Honorable P.J. Montague, attended recently a passing out ceremony held at a British Art II. 280 cadets were lined up on parade and Prince Olaf took the salute of graduation. Among them were 11 cadets from the Canadian Women's Army Corps, the first to graduate from a British ATS Art II. The girls were inspected and presented a fine picture with their hat bands and flashes of spotless white, their buttons gleaming. Then Prince Olaf congratulated the cadets on their graduation. Most of the quacks are to be employed in administrative jobs, releasing officers for field units. With a Canadian officer cadet as a platoon commander, the quacks marched past with their British sisters. The steady precision of their marching bearing testimony to the thoroughness of their training. Lieutenant Charmaine Sampson greeted her father, Lieutenant General Sampson, and was congratulated. Colonel Meehan of Toronto with his wife, who was among the graduates. One Major General and 11 Lieutenants. Chins up, girls. Brigadier Rutherford was one of the chairmen of the Cambrai Day Sports Meet held by Fort Gary Horse. In the last war, Lieutenant Jock Strawn, now a colonel, added a glorious page to the history of the regiment when he charged across the canal at Cambrai ahead of the tanks and penetrated deep into the German rear. For this feat, Lieutenant Strawn received the Victoria Cross, and the regiment has since celebrated every anniversary of the day with a sports meet. Supervisor Millington of the YMCA was director of events. At the end of the day, when the scores had been added up, Brigadier Rutherford awarded the prizes. Major Mindel, captain of the winning team, received the solid silver trophy made in the workshop from two tin kettles. Tura captured, the Canadians pressed onwards. Gambatesa was the immediate objective. An operational plane hovered overhead searching for enemy gun positions. Nearing Gambatesa, the body of a dead Italian peasant woman was passed, victim of the retreating enemy's shell fire. As the Carlton and Yorks captured Gambatesa in a push with other maritime troops, the French Canadians moved into Chelsea and the advance continued toward Campo Basso. Mule trains operated by North African Arabs kept a continual flow of supplies to the front line. Positions were frequently checked. Rain and enemy fire slowed the advance, but the mule-borne wireless equipment kept the detachment in contact with patrols and rear headquarters for further orders. At a Canadian Infantry Brigade headquarters, Brigadier MHS Penhale of Ottawa had a few final words with a senior officer. In 1942, Brigadier Penhale was appointed to the headquarters staff of the 1st Canadian Army. It has now been announced that he has been made Brigadier General Staff at CMHQ London to succeed Brigadier Roger, who is to assume command of an infantry brigade. There were plenty of diversions on the road to Campo Basso, and the forward speed came to depend on how quickly the sappers were able to repair the roads and bridges destroyed by the Germans. During 
reaching the last stage of the drive on Campo Basso, the advance was made through mountain country. The artillery set up their howitzers and dug slit trenches for protection against enemy shell fire. Private E.T. Noble mounted guard with a Bren gun, while Staff Sergeant Lewinton spotted enemy positions in the valley below. Campo Basso was now within view, and its fall climaxed two weeks of fierce fighting. Since landing at Reggio in September, the Canadians had advanced 500 miles through Italy. The Germans hastily evacuated Campo Basso, and the population cheered the Canadians as they moved triumphantly in. Basso was soon nicknamed Canada Town, and the RCMP directed traffic at the local Piccadilly Circus. Gunner McGilligan of Calgary had a shoe shine while other Canadians bought souvenirs for the folks at home. Lance Corporal Lord asks the shortest route to the Beaver Club. Not just off to Falker Square, but as near to it as the boys can make it out in Italy. Corporal Davis and Sergeant Carver enjoy a nice cup of tea while Privates Bonomo and Williams write home to Toronto. The Beaver Club has its own barber shop and Lance Corporal Walsh gets all prettied up. Canadians have left their imprint on Campo Basso and one of these days some town in Germany will become another Canadian town. Fighting French of the Navy and Army, as well as airborne and commando troops, were on parade for a special investiture of Canadians who distinguished themselves at Dieppe. General Matinet, chief of the French military mission in Great Britain, was accompanied on his inspection by Major General Montague, Major General Vanier, and high-ranking French officers. Then, as the citation was read, the general decorated each man. In charge of light ACAC -ac during the landing, Lieutenant Colonel Guy Gosling, now a brigadier, received the Croix de Guerre avec Pomme de Verme. So did Private Charles Highland, who shot down an enemy aircraft attacking at low level. Captain George Buchanan, who set a great example of bravery and coolness, received the Croix de Guerre avec Pomme de Bronze. Captain Ross Campbell, who was wounded in the face when leading his men across a bridge under enemy fire. Sergeant Arthur Souchard continued doing the job to which he had been assigned, though seriously wounded in the leg. Also decorated was Private Gordon Buchanan, who was blinded in the operation. He alone received the traditional accolade. Private Stanley Carley regrouped a section which had suffered severe casualties and continued to lead them in action, showing complete disregard for his own safety. Under intense enemy fire, Private Harvey Seaton crossed the beach and, although wounded, continued to fire until ordered to withdraw. Major Clarence Ostrander received the Quad de Vecca Toile de Bronze. He was in charge of a tank landing craft. Fitting indeed was this investiture, for Canada has inherited the great traditions of both France and Great Britain. And someday soon, Frenchmen and Canadians will be marching side by side into France itself. <laughs>